Guys, what's going on? I'm Sam Crack. Welcome to the car of the day. This should be a pretty good one. We're going to take a look at a 2017 Dodge Viper ACR with a twin turbo kit on it that was bought at a salvage auction and now being offered for sale by a dealership for the price of $111,000, which begs the question, is it worth it? I'm going to let you guys answer that question, but first I want to give you a little bit more detail and background on the car, including the purchase price for the car at the salvage auction and some of the photos before this dealership did a little touch up on it. But before we get into the details of this Viper, got to give a huge thanks to this car of the day sponsor and that is Dollar Shave Club. Now if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that I've been using Dollar Shave Club way before they've even been a sponsor of the channel, but what you might not know is that Dollar Shave Club is a lot more than just a shave. On the right is their shower starter set, including trial sizes of their Sage Black Pepper Shampoo, their Amber and Lavender Body Cleanser, and their Citrus Hawaiian Ginger Face Cleanser. And on the left is their shave starter set, including their signature executive handle with the box full of cartridges and a bottle of Dr. Carver Shave Butter. They're also offering their Oral Care starter set with a trial of their Superba toothpaste and a toothbrush. All three of these starter sets sets are only five dollars each that's shipping included you can pick one or you can pick all three and let me tell you something about dr carver's shave butter i haven't used a shaving cream nor a shave gel ever since dollar shave club started making this stuff it's so incredible it makes my face feel amazing during and after the shave this right here is worth the price of admission alone i'm gonna give a huge thanks to dollar shave club for sponsoring this video make sure you check them out at the link in the description box well, for this special offer, or just head on over to dollarshaveclub.com slash samcrack. Inspiration for this car of the day came from a Road and Track article written by Brian Silvestro. Brian outlines the cool factor of the ACR in this article, but he also has an account from the previous owner talking about how the car was damaged. And he also discusses some of the damages on the Viper based on the eBay photos and just some of the description of the eBay listing. And we're gonna start with the previous owner's account. Here it's written that according to the previous owner, this now salvaged titled Viper hydroplane while driving in the wet and crashed, setting off the driver's side front airbag and ripping off the front bumper. And clearly from that main photo, you can just see it looks like the front bumper came completely clean off. Then it says the front left wheel also looks heavily curbed but still holds air. Perhaps most worrying is the damage to the bottom of the A-pillar. The impact looks to have pushed the area in ever so slightly, damaging the windshield. It may not look like much from some angles, but this damage compromised the frame and therefore the crash structure. It's probably the main reason it was totaled out. Now checking out the eBay listing and blowing up these photos, first thing I notice right here, the intercooler is mounted perfectly. It looks great. I mean, for a car that had a bumper completely torn off of it, if the intercooler is still in place like that, I wouldn't imagine there was much damage that got past that area. You can also see both the headlights are intact and from this front angle, the hood looks like it's sitting pretty decently. Again, from this angle, everything looks pretty good. That color is great. And one of the things that typically happens on these front end accident cars, since the bumper usually screws into the fender liner here somewhere, if the bumper flies off, usually you see these all cracked or ripped apart. That fender liner even looks like it's in really good shape. If we keep going, there's several other angles of the car which are pretty much undamaged, except for potentially this rear bumper. I'm not sure if this is just a reflection of another car or something in the background or if there's just some light scuffing on it and needs a repaint. Now here's what we really want to see. The damage on the A pillar and the damage to the corner of the hood here. Now in this photo, that sort of damage looks totally superficial. It doesn't look like a big deal at all. Going back to what Brian said, they compromised the frame and the structure of the car. Something like this wouldn't really compromise much of the structure of the car and any good body guy could knock that out. Obviously, we've got a crack windshield here. If you follow my Audi R8 rebuild, you know that windshields on exotic cars are fairly expensive. I'll pull up the price on this windshield in a little bit when we start to go through some of the parts prices on it. Otherwise, it does look like there's a piece of something missing here. I don't know if it's part of the door or part of the hood. Either way, something either is gonna have to be fabricated or you're gonna be spending a lot of money on one of these Viper body panels. Again, from this angle, our fender liner looks good where it's screws in. It does look like those U-nuts or whatever usually slid over those holes did rip out of place. Maybe we got a crack right here, but nothing that looks in too terrible of shape. Again, when you see these modules here and you see this intercooler, 
everything looks really nice and straight. As I mentioned earlier, the asking price on this car, $111,000. This is, of course, the Viper ACR. This is the highest spec Viper. It's a track spec Viper, straight from Dodge, very capable car. And this one has over 1,000 horsepower. Brian actually cited in the article, it's got about 1,000 horsepower on pump gas, 1,400 horsepower on E85. It's got a great purple color. But the twin turbo kit. A seller is telling us that the add-ons on this car total up to in excess of $35,000, including the turbos and race program ECU. And I do want to give credit to the seller because he's mentioning the car has a salvage tile, that it does run and drive. There are his front damage and there is front upper frame horn damage and that the driver airbag did deploy. So in my opinion, they're giving us a pretty good description of the car. Now what I wanna do is hop over to the autoauctions.io listing for this Dodge Viper when it was bought at salvage auction. There's a few things that are real key takeaways from this listing. The first thing is that this was listed as a 2017 Dodge Viper GTC. This is an inferior model to the ACR. If we blow up the first photo, you can clearly see the ACR sticker here. So this car was mislabeled at the salvage auction, making it probably a really great deal for this buyer. If you saw already when I opened up the listing, this car sold for $57,000. So based on that, this dealer has the potential to make a decent amount of money on it. Quickly, if we just go through the information here, it was being offered for sale by an insurance company in St. Louis, Missouri with a salvage title and 2,000 miles on the clock. But let's go back to the photos. This is what really paints the true picture of the car, in my opinion. You could see where the car was obviously hit up lower here and probably in the front passenger corner, pushing up things like the hood. The one headlight in the first photo here is hanging. So I'd have to imagine some of the headlight brackets are cracked on this car. That front splitter didn't seem to be in the auction dealer photos. That front splitter is an expensive piece as I'm about to show you. And of course that hood being pushed up like that, pushed in probably to the windshield, cracking the windshield, messing up that A pillar. And I think the damage is going to lie more in this front frame than it is in the uh, A pillar here as was described in the road and track article. But let's keep going through the photos. It does look like there is some sort of blemish here on the rear bumper. I'm guessing the car probably slid at one point, just rubbed up against. I mean, that's not a big issue there. Here's our deployed airbag. Anytime we have a deployed airbag, that means our seatbelts are likely locked up. It all depends on the type of car. We also have some sort of crash data in the computers there. That needs to be reset if you're going to rebuild it. Here's a look underneath the hood, and this is the most telling photo. We can see a lot of twisted and damaged plastic and carbon fiber or just fiber components, whether it's fiberglass or something else right here. These are the radiator fans. I'm guessing those completely crunched and got messed up. Right here are two intake tubes that are completely bent. And here's the head-on look from what the smash on this Viper looks like. I want to go back to the eBay listing and compare photos here just quickly. First thing, obviously, that intercooler that we discussed, this was likely replaced. It doesn't make any sense because the car had damage that passed the radiator from the auction photos. Also this hood has damage probably likely all around the edges in that corner as we saw. This is going to be a very pricey fix as will the front bumper. These Vipers are notorious for very expensive parts. If you're following the Goon Squad bill you know that they priced out a hood at over $10,000 and they're trying to repair their own. Taking a look at the engine bay we could see the intake tubes on this car. They look to be in the right place and they look pretty much perfect. They also appear to be made out of plastic. Plastic? Well, I'm not 100% sure about that. They were clearly kinked in the other photos. So I'm assuming a lot of this stuff that would really make this car shine in photos was replaced. Really, the only photos of the frame damage that we're able to see are the last two from the seller. And it's very difficult to tell what this is and what is damaged. Is this the main rail? Could be. Has it been moved over a little bit? It's very possible. Now, Vipers are made out of steel. I'd assume they're made out of some sort of high strength steel increasing the cost of this repair. And the reason something like this was totaled out, if you pull up the price of a frame for a Viper, it's over $10,000. Not to mention, think about all the disassembly, taking all the parts off the old one, putting on a new one. It makes no sense, so it costs tens of thousands of dollars in labor. When you have full coverage on a car, it's the insurance company's duty to return it to you in the condition it was before the accident. Even though this car looks like it has minimal repairable damage, by the book, it's not really repairable, and that's why it gets completely totaled out. I wanna go through a couple things. I wanna try and estimate what I think it might take to repair this car if you were to do it to factory spec 
And I want you to tell me in the comment section whether you think this Viper ACR would be a good deal at $111,000. Let's take into consideration a clean title Viper ACR with no modifications. These cars are trading hands between $140,000 and $170,000. You can go on eBay. There's a couple of listings active right now for sale of cars with a couple thousand miles on them. Plenty of examples to choose from. But remember, this car has a twin turbo kit on it valued at right around $35,000. The problem is with modifications. Obviously, we can't really value modifications at the full retail price. These are things that have been used. And if you were to part it out as a kit, probably sell for around half of that. So let's say that we've got what might be around a $20,000 modification to this car. That might bring the value up to about $170,000 used car. But remember, this one has a salvage title and has not been fixed yet. I would have to say that you have to deduct at least 20% for it being a salvage title. I say 20% because exotic cars tend to have a lesser discount than your run-of-the-mill salvage cars. So something like a Toyota Camry, you might be able to buy for 30 to 50% off with the salvage title. But since this is a more rare car and the fact that it wasn't super heavily damaged, you might get some sort of 20% reduction in value. Now that brings our price down in the 120s, 130s. So that leaves us a really tight budget to actually go ahead and properly fix and rebuild this car. Now let's look at a couple parts prices, not including any sort of labor. You might have to spend to get this car back in proper shape. Let's start really easily with the windshield. This one is actually not too bad, $788. This is a kind of a wholesale number, but still about 800 bucks for a windshield. Add a couple hundred, $300 for installation. So you got $1,000 for windshield. You're not doing too bad yet. Next, here's a used bumper that I pulled up on eBay for $850 bucks plus $200 shipping. Let's say you can make this guy an offer. You end up getting it shipped to you for around a grand. It's a really good price because this bumper at the Dodge dealer would be quite a bit of money. But hey, how about that front diffuser? That's the thing that sets off the ACR, makes it look completely different from the stock Viper. Now there's probably a lot of aftermarket solutions for this, but if you wanted to buy one directly from Dodge, take a look here. It's going to cost you $8,251. And guess what? We haven't priced in any sort of little brackets, little hinges, any sort of little damaged pieces of plastic. This is a race car here. So there's going to be all sorts of ducts. Even though I said the fender liners look pretty good and you might be able to reuse them. That one did have a crack. These are parts that are going to add up to hundreds and really quick thousands and then quicker than that tens of thousands of dollars just because of the rarity of the car and how the parts prices on Vipers have been priced out historically. So in my opinion, $111,000 for this car is pretty darn high, and I think it's going to need to be sold for a pretty substantial discount in order for there to be any takers. Now these are just parts prices, and we haven't even discussed frame repairs, how much of the engine bay has to be disassembled to get to that front frame and then repair it. There's really no authorized repair if this is a high strength steel, but there are shops that will still perform the repair on it. And you're probably looking minimum at least a couple thousand dollars for that. Now, if there's a substantial amount of disassembly, like a whole pulling of the engine transmission to get to the parts you need repaired, well, then you're talking about doubling that probably four to five thousand dollars. So with all that in mind, I think $111,000 personally is way too high on this car and the seller to make it even some sort of rational decision for someone out there to want to rebuild, have to knock the price down at least 20 grand because the cost to repair this car properly, especially a track car with a twin turbo setup in excess of a thousand horsepower, is going to be up there. There are 46 watchers considering it right now on eBay. And so maybe someone has the access to these parts, or maybe they considered building something so similar. And we all know that if you go out and buy a brand new one and then build it, you're gonna be talking about probably knocking on $200,000 door. So this might be a money saving opportunity for someone. Now I wanna finish by reading the last statement in the road and track article. And that is though it'd probably be a pain to get it registered for the road, there's nothing stopping you from buying this thing, tweaking the frame back into place, replacing the bumper and windshield, throwing in a cage and other safety equipment and taking it to your local racing event. Now this statement hits home for me. I've seen a lot of cars, cars that I really wanted, cars that I felt like I needed to win at salvage auction. And I say, hey, 
All this needs is a little frame tweak and then replace the bumper and windshield and then just a couple other pieces and parts there. And then three months later, it's still sitting at a body shop and you're hitting your head against the wall because there's one part that you can't source or they can't get something done right and you gotta come to some sort of compromise or they want more money. There are just so many obstacles when it comes to rebuilding an exotic car with this amount of damage that Again, you have to get a really steep discount to make it worth it. Now, what do you guys think? Maybe you think I'm wrong, or maybe you think this is the bargain of the century. Let me know in the comments section below. Guys, if you're not already following me on Instagram, be sure to do so right here. I'm gonna post a picture of the new build coming to the channel very soon before it goes live here on YouTube. Also, I wanna give a big thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this car of the day. Be sure to check them out at the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you very soon.